Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday service. Happy New Year to you all. Glad to see you all here and probably, hopefully, didn't stay up too late so that you can still be able to, to wake up to come here. But we just thank you for, for coming here. So before we start our worship today, let us start with the call to worship. And today's call to worship is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the father of all nations. You grant power and you take away power. We thank you, Lord, that you are always in control. We thank you, Lord, that you always equip your people to do your work. We ask, Lord, that for this new year that you will use us and that you will use us mightily. We ask that you would just send your spirit upon us now. Help us to give you all the praise that you deserve. Help us to set aside all our distractions and help us to focus on you. Through Christ we pray, amen. Please stand for the first song. Who am, I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought.
Today's scripture reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that him, through him on all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to, the, to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was, which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Good morning. Happy New Year. Wow. Uh, did you excited when you uh, went out to see the fireworks last night? Well, because it's raining, I just stayed at home and uh, watched the uh, Channel 4 uh, through my cell phone. Okay. Although they experienced not that kind of uh, Stereo, but still it is good to celebrate the uh, passing away of the 2022 and welcoming 2023. Yes, yeah, just like what the uh, worship team said to us this morning. Uh, God is almighty. What we see before us is a mountain. But what it is in his eyes is going to move the mountain, right? Before us, 2023 will be another challenging years. So, uh, but we believe that if we rely on God, everything will be okay. All right? Okay, um, I would like to let you understand that uh, there is something special in the program today. Uh, in the program, you can see some uh, nice pictures, okay? But of course, uh, of, uh, unless you uh, go to uh, watch online, okay? I hope you do, you do so. And then uh, we have the, uh, the list of the volunteers for 2023. Most of them are just uh, really yet because uh, there is, uh, we, do not, we did not have much uh, activities in the past, uh, past year. So we hope that this year, God will move the mountains away from us. Okay, um, so let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us another year of opportunity. The opportunity before us is very challenging, we understand that. Yes, in the, now we see that the, the COVID is over. But still, there is a lot of people in this world, they are still under the uh, threat of, the, of, a, of a infecting with the uh, COVID. And therefore, God, may you give wisdom to all the leaders in the world to know how to uh, tackle the COVID properly and possibly. Oh Lord, we understand that this is not an easy task, but 
this, the mountain before us, of course, there is another mountain, it's the war. The war in Eastern Europe between Russia and Ukraine. And we are so sad to see this thing happening, especially in the Christmas Eve and also in the New Year Eve when uh, Ukraine was bombarded. Oh Lord, a lot of people pass away because of this war and conflict. Press and wars have been uh, affecting our life. And we ask for your mercy and ask for your grace to give the wisdom to the world leaders. Let them have the wisdom to settle down all these kind of uh, challenges. But on the other hand, we ask you to come again more sooner. We know that there is a kind of a conflict between these two prayer requests, because when you come, there will be more conflict and more war going on in this world. But anyway, we ask in your name to keep us safe. We ask that even in good times or in bad times, you will guide us, you will open our ways so that we see your guidance, we can experience your protections. Keep the peace of our mind in us so that we can rejoice and rejoice and rejoice in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to share with you with a new topics. The topic is okay. Oh, first of all, we have the uh, uh, installation service because every year we start with a new term of the volunteers, and in fact, the volunteers are just all of you. Every one of you are volunteers, and I am very impressed by your uh, active participations in all kinds of the ministry of the church. Without your help, nothing can happen. All right? Now, for the detail of the list, you can go back to the online and check a bit. But we are going to have the installation service with some kinds of uh, responsive reading. I'm going to read uh, the pastor, and then you will read the, con you will read the uh, congregations, okay? Respond it. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. Please read together. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies and living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Now to him who is able to do immeasurable more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Besides reading this responsive reading, I, of course, I would invite every one of you to participate and taking care of the church ministry whenever you are invited to take part. Okay. I would say thank you to you all beforehand. All right. And now um, we have the, the scripture reading. I'm going to start this new year with a new title, Justification by Faith. And this is the start of our faith. Last year we talked about 
what is church? Okay, this year we start with what do we believe in? How? How did we call ourselves a Christian? What do we believe? So we start with the justification of faith. Instead of uh, teaching you through the systematic theology, I try to do it in some other way. Okay, I hope that it will be uh, interesting and more challenging. In justification by faith, first of all, we have to understand who is God and who is man. We all b- believe that in the Bible it says, in the image of God we are created. But uh, when we go to the world, secular world, we are always confronted with, hey man, God didn't create us in his image. It is us who create God in our image. Therefore, the title for this service is Image of God or Image of Man. Now, we are going to have three points. First, God created man or man creates God. Second, Justice and mercy, survival for the fittest. And third, judgment day or death is final. First of all, when we talk about God creating man or man creates God, we have to go back to the science. Why? It's about creation. Whether it is a creation or evolution. In this world, we have two major points of view. Either you are theist or atheist. Whether you believe in God or you should say, oh, there's no God. And so the uh, theist people will, of course, support belief in creations. While the atheists, they will say that, okay, everything is by evolution only possibility. Either you have God or no God, okay? Then we can ask ourselves a very hard issue. From where did the sun come? Do you ever think of that, about that? When you were born, okay, the sun already there. But how about a million years ago, is the sun there? Yeah. The sun was there, even in the Jurassic time, right? <laughs> Millions and billions of years ago, the sun already here, there. Where is man at that time? Nowhere. So, evolutionists, they believe that human beings evolve from a very simple cell, okay? And then, how about the sun? The evolution explain the origin of the sun or the origin of the universe? They did. They tried to believe in evolution by faith. Evolution is itself is a kind of God. Everything comes in a, by accident. Is that, do we live in probability? By chances, we exist in this world? Let's see. This is the sun. And the sun comes because there is always a nuclear reaction on the surface of the sun. I'm sorry. I, we have to go back to physics. <laughs> but physics, you cannot argue with physics. Physics is about the law of nature, not theory of nature. Theory of nature means, oh, there is some theory, A, B, C, and D, okay? We don't know whether A is correct or E is correct. We don't know. It's just a kind of theory. But for the law of nature, definitely, 
it is the law, one law. Sometimes it may be two laws. Wow, wow what happened? That when the law, when the physicist to understand the power of light, sometimes we can prove with an experiment repeatedly that light is a particle. But on the other hand, we can repeatedly do some other experiment showing that light is a wave and it is not a particle. Light has this duality uh, character. The scientists finally drop their absolute uh, theory on light, okay? Light had two particles, but, and then we see it. How about the sun? Amazingly, long before human or life exists in this world, there is the sun. How come the sun? The sun is not just emitted light. It is fantastic to understand light. The sun has a lot of explosion. It is always long-stop nuclear reaction on the surface of the sun. Wow, amazing. Who ordered this uh, nuclear reaction on the surface of the sun? And we know that nuclear fusion, that means it is very radioactive. You meet all kinds of radiations. Well, but we found that there are some two different types of nuclear reactions. Okay? Oh, I don't know whether Stan had the time to take to the lab in your office. Okay, this is the... I take it from the YouTube. <laughs> It recently, uh, the Livermore lab announced that we can produce nuclear fusion in a lab. Now, this is not by one year work, not by two years. They have been working that over 10 or 20 or 30 years. And this machine is the sixth generations, okay, according to the, the, uh, the in-charge set, the sixth generations. And now, finally, they can repeat the explosion of the sun. It seems like now a human being can make an artificial sun. Amazing. How to harness, harness the, um, the power? You see, a lot of uh, constructions, a lot of engineering. Wow. They didn't come by accident. Now remember, everything is by purpose, by planning, by a distance. Design, okay. The nuclear reactor, nuclear plant. The idea is simple. This is not a secret. Uh, this is a college level <laughs> physics. <laughs> Deuterium and tritium, they combine, and then these two atoms, they fuse together and becoming helium-free and neutron and lipidium. Well, uh, if you want to know about the details, then you can go back. But the idea is the same idea as in the generation of the solar power on the surface of the sun. For your understanding, atom, combined with was formed by an electron and proton, one, one. And then later on, the scientists found out that, oh, besides an electron and then a proton, 
there is another particle inside the nucleus. We call it neutron. All right. So one in the outside, and the other two is in the inside. Okay. This is a classical physics. But then in quantum mechanics, we said, oh, no such thing like that. There is a possibility of distribution of the appearance of the particle. Wow, that is so complicated. <laughs> but in classical physics, we think, okay, an electron and proton and neutron inside. And interestingly, for a hydrogen atom, ordinary hydrogen atom is a one electron and one proton. But there is a kind you call uh, heavy hydrogen atom, one electron, one proton, and one neutron. Okay, deuterium it can be existed in nature, but it, you have a lot, a lot of water, and indeed big pools of water, then you can find the deuterium, H2O. But the hydrogen atom is a little bit heavy, we call it heavy water. Tritium, wow, is more heavier. One electron, one proton, this is the original hydrogen. And the tritium from the, uh, from the term TRI, tri, that means one electron and three neutron and one proton. So when they fuse together, and they, there is a new, a new element come out. It's called lithium. And in the reactions, you find that there is the mass before the reaction is heavier than the mass of the product afterward. So there is a loss in mass. Where did the loss in mass go? <laughs> According to the Einstein most famous theory, E energy equal to loss of mass times the square of the velocity of the night. E equal to mc square. This is high school physics. <laughs> you see, theory is very simple. But when you put it into engineering, that will be very different. Can it be done by evolution? The sun already, originally is a very big planet. And then this big planet has a lot of uh, get all the gas to, together. And the gas come together, have a conference. Okay, then we have the nuclear uh, fusion or nuclear fusion. Uh-oh. In nuclear reaction, there are two types. One is called the nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion combine, combine two atoms into one atom and release an, an energy. This kind of energy is called clean energy. Low, radio, low radiation come out. Wow, that is perfect. Now, the nuclear energy that we are using is, called, is caused by nuclear fissions. A, happy, a, a very heavy metal, like a radium, okay? Deteriorate into radium 234 or 235, something like that. From a 23, hmm, I don't, I don't forget. <laughs> and that is also a loss in mass, and loss in mass also gives you an explosion. Now, what we can do nowadays is to manipulate, control the nuclear fissions. Before 2022, no one can contain the power of the nuclear fusion. Now, we know how to control it by putting a lot of uh, apparatus in the lab. The nuclear bomb is using nuclear fissions because let it blow, <laughs> boom, and the world was uh, 
destroy. Okay? We don't care about how the radiation comes out after the nuclear bomb. Okay? Release it. Release the radiations. Just like what happened in 1986 when the nuclear plant in Ukraine was uh, blown up because of the laboratory. You can see this documentary from the Netflix. Radiation. When the people want to rescue the power plant or to contain the radiations, all the workers, they cannot stay there more than 30 seconds. They were exposed to the radiation and they will die if they exposed more than 30 seconds. Now, good news to us, right? Can it prove that if we can create the sun, he is the man-made sun. Does it mean that God is made in the image of man? But we have to understand the problem is we have to get deuterium and tritium first. We cannot start anything without something. We have to use something. There is something already there, and then we make use of it. Fine. But we cannot create deuterium. We cannot create tritium. We have to put these two things together and then through the lab and then we can have this one. So, we have to be more logical. The uh, Renaissance, one of the achievements of Renaissance in the middle century required us to use our brain we had to think. In the Red Salon time, people against the idea of, at that time, the church or the Roman Catholic Church at that time said that the sun is revolving around the earth. But the scientists in Red Salon time, they do the data and then they calculate that from the data, calculate that. No, it's the earth moving around the sun. But the church oppressed these scientists, okay? If they do not obey the church, they have to put into jail. That's why at that time, arouse the human being, the curiosity, to understand the properties of matter. And then finally, Rayla Song arouses us science or knowledge is a part of civilization of human being. We have to use our brain to understand the nature of the matter. Now, if we do in this way, then we have to understand Sun could not be made by man. Where is man when the sun is gone, is there? Would the sun came into being by accident or by whose power? John chapter 1, 1 and 4. It gives us an understanding about the nature. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Remember, in the Apostle John times, God revealed to Apostle John about the property natures. Everything is involving the light. The light does not give us oh, the beautiful nature so that we can have a physical visions. Light 
is also telling us God is giving us the visibility of our mind inside of us, something that cannot be seen with our physical eyes. Enlightenment. That's why we use the light as a verb. Enlightenment. Hey, we are coming into a period that we, are, we have been enlightened by the Renaissance. John 8, 12 said, there was a time when Jesus spoke to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. When Jesus come, the blind can see. Now, physical, he healed the blind. But the Pharisee, the, but the, uh, the priest, the Jerusalem temple priest, they did not see that Jesus is the night because they already brought Jesus outside their heart. So they cannot see inside. Light of the world shine upon us so that we can see inside of us. Inside of us, we are sinners. We have a lot of secret inside of us. But when the light of God came into us, our secret exposed. We cannot hide inside of us any longer. On the outside, we can be very good. We could be a perfect human being. But when the light shines upon us, not just on the outside, but also deep inside of us, if the X-ray can reveal to us what is not happening to our bones or internal organs, the MRI, the light of God, Jesus Christ, shine upon us, then we know what is in our mind. Justice and mercy. We have been living in a very good uh, moment of our time. 70 years in the past, before 2022, no, war, no major war happened. But in the spring of the 2022, in the February of 2022, suddenly Russia attacked Ukraine. And they said that they are going to protect them because Ukraine is going to attack Russia. Is there any justice? Did you see mercy in the wartime? Survival for the fittest. If you want to learn more about these terms, you can try to watch the uh, TV program. What happened in the uh, Roman Empire? What happened in the Spartacus? What happening in the barbarians and the Roman Empire or the Game of Thrones, <laughs> then you can see the cruelty of war. Justice and mercy or the survival for the fittest. All the men in all the ruler try to become an emperor. They want to be the head of the world. That brings us a challenge. Why? We know that we cannot choose where to born, okay? But we find that if you were born in the royal family, then in your blood, then your blood will be very much different from the peasant's family because you are the royal family. And in your vein, it is a royal vein. You are supposed to succeed your uh, king father throne to rule the world, right? 
Is that justice? Even though you are king, but is this your choice? I want to be king, but, God, but I don't know why God put me in an ordinary family. Unfortunately, I'm not, I, I was not born in the war time, okay? <laughs> is that fair? We don't have a choice to choose who are our parents. Is it fair if you are female and you were born in Afghanistan? What happened? No equality. Woman and man. Man always superior and woman always inferior because of their belief. Woman had to stay home and give birth to the second generation while the man receive education and become if they are not the ruler of the country, at least they are the rule ruler in their family. The woman? No. They are the underdog. Is it fair? What is the human right? Nowadays, we are taught by our college, by our school, that there is something called human right. Human right is something that you can feel, uh, but it is very abstract, okay? Equality is one of it, but according to George Orwell, the animal farm, he wrote a sentence that had been quoted from time to time. George Orwell in the animal farm said that all animals are equal. All are equal. But some are more equal than others. Well, you know that if that in the sentence there is a word conjunction like but that means all the things before but is bullish. <laughs> Nothing. All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Do you think that this statement is uh, correct? In a physical world, yeah, it happens all around the world. But it is fair some are more equal than the others. They do not say that I am more, imp more important than you, okay? I just said that, oh, I am more equal than you. <laughs> wow. You know, nowadays, people like to have this kind of uh, bring around the world so that the man-made legal institution or a hierarchy or the social system favor those who are rulers. John 1, 9 and 10. What does the true night say? The true night that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. The true knight chose to come into this world in the form of a defenseless baby, without any protections, without anything. He, is, he was so fragile when he was a baby. And that's why a few weeks ago we talked about the massacre of the babies by King Herod. The world did not recognize him because the world rejected the night. So 
the night come to them, expose their darkness, expose their secret. So they reject by killing him. Who is Jesus? And then the third part. Judgment day. The death is final. Nowadays, we have to talk about Judgment Day. Before 2020, we think that there's no, no such a thing as Judgment Day. All the world, everyone is prophets, populous because of the world economy, because of the peace of the world. But everything turned around in the year 2020 when we found that there is something called COVID-19. And then in 2022, suddenly there is a war in Europe and then it broke our heart. We cannot keep the peace. Even though we have a United Nations, even though in the United Nations there is a common agreement, all the members of the United Nations should not take advantage of others' weaker country. It still happened. The COVID and the uh, Russia Ukraine war break our hearts, but it also awakening us. We have been awakened by this reality that the judgment day is not far from us. We got to know that it is the devil, Satan is the one controlling all the evil things happening in this world. It's because of the evil. Satan. Why? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Let's read. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Friends, you were dead in your transgression and sins. Before we come across with Jesus, we are sinners. We know it. Other people, not even our, our siblings, our parents, but we know it in our heart. We are not perfect. We are sinners. But since we are dead, we cannot see what is inside of us. We block the light. But God is God, and He came into our life, and He taught to us, Ernest, do you see what I see? I know who you are. On that year, that month, that day, at that moment, you did such a thing. No one knows. But I know, Ernest. You didn't know because you were dead in your transgressions and sin. You see, it seemed like, oh, everybody is doing the same thing. I, let me do the same thing. No one there. When you follow the ways of this world, Because other people are doing this, it is legitimate for me to do it as well. Is that? Unfortunately, this way is controlled by the ruler of the kingdom of the air, not by the kingdom of 
heaven is by the kingdom of the air. Who is the kingdom? Who is the ruler of the kingdom of the air? Satan. John chapter 8. Jesus said, You belong to your father, the devil. That's what he talked to the Pharisee, talked to the priest. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him when he lies, he speaks his native language. What kind of language is he speaking? He is a liar and the father of lies. Do you understand why all are equal, but some are more equal? <laughs> this is one of the lies. This is happening in every part of the world, whether it is east or west. Some are more equal than others. They are not saying some are more important than others. No. They try to put it in other words. Some are more equal. They are not more important, but they are more equal. Now, this is the father of lies. Judgment Day is designed to end the devil and Satan, but also, also and the, his followers, the wicked doers. Who can punish Russia? Aggressions in uh, Ukraine. Not even the USA. Not even the United Nations. Who can do it except God? Judgment Day is the day to terminate the existence of devil, Satan, and his followers by putting them in the eternal fire. Trust and believe. Believe that God will carry out the judgment. We do not rely on the human judgment. In the human eyes, remember, some are more equal than others. It is Satan who control the ideology of this world. Okay, in Apostle John time, there is no ideology, <laughs> but Apostle John said, "Hey, this is." the ruler of the air, of the world, okay? The ideology, you see? How the current ideology infiltrate our belief. That's why we have to stick to the Bible. Judgment Day is the beginning of the cleaning up of this sinful world and to establish a perfect world with pure just and pure love for all who believe in Jesus Christ who is the true knight. Revelation 21 it says let's read he will wipe every tear from their eyes no more tears no more death no more mourning no more crying no more pain for the old order of things has passed away. That's why we're always looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. How wonderful. No more tear, because no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. And he also, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. He is referring to Jesus Christ. 
I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Jesus Christ, who died for our sin, he has been experiencing the tears from his heart, and he experienced the death, his mourning when he was nailed on the cross, crying and pain, all this kind of stuff. He understood our feeling. Pray to God, pray to Jesus. When you are hurt, Jesus Christ surely will listen and he understands your feeling. And he is there to help you. These words are trustworthy and true. Dear friends, is there a God? Yes, there is God. But the problem is, who is that God? Who is the God? God is invisible. That's why Jesus comes into this world. He entered into this world. We, the Bible said the word become fresh so that we know who God is. Justice and mercy. Survival for the fittest. If we have a God like Jesus, surely there will be a time for the pure just and pure love prevail. Because when Jesus come back again, that's the beginning of the judgment day. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the wonderful things that you promise in the Bible. We believe in you because you are the creator of heaven and earth. We believe in you because you are just and you are love. Even though we experience tears, pain, mourning, and crying in this world, but surely by faith we believe in you that you will help us to move the mountain. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We stand for our last songs.
And please remain standing. And now is the time for our Holy Communion. Every time when we have the Holy Communion, we, of course, we, we remember, remind ourselves about the love of Christ. Usually, we will have the collections uh, of the offerings uh, on Communion Sunday, two, twice. One is for the charity or the care fund. One is for the general fund. What I am trying to remind you that we are still connecting care fund for, to, for the church so that we can help the needy. And besides, we also have a particular uh, uh, offering to support one of the uh, pastor, uh, Pastor Tim Nell. He is still uh, under... Uh, going the recovery of his uh, second stroke. So if you are touched by God's heart, you can uh, make a special donation, uh, making sure that it is to support Pastor Tim. All the funds that we receive that will be directed to Pastor Tim now. Now let us remind ourselves about what we believe. Let us read the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born by the daughter of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He seated at the right hand of God the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And it's time for us to confess our sin to our Almighty God. Let's read the prayer of our confessions. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed. In the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate thought, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And then it's time I would invite uh, Joe and uh, Stan, please come forth to help me to pass the Holy Communion to you. Our Holy Communion is open to all. Who would like to come, come, come before Jesus Christ to know Him more, to love Him more? 
Whether you are a member of our church or not, you are welcome to receive the Holy Communion. Okay, now let's pure the top, I mean the bread, the cover of the bread. And let's hold it. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the light in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's receive it. And now let's carefully peel off the other end. And let's read. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood for the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's receive it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful time that we come together at church to receive your Holy Communion. May you are in us and we are in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please rise. And let us receive the benedictions. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and fellowship of the Holy Spirit inside of us forevermore. Amen. And God bless you. May God bless you all. So. Uh, please uh, have the fellowship in the fourth floor or in the lobby. Go in peace. Hey, hot.